Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about how making freshies is hazardous. Now, this may not be what you're thinking. I'm not talking about in a health aspect. I'm more talking in a livelihood and how it could damage your business or even your personal life. Some of you may already know this information and I am not here to judge what anyone is doing or how they're doing it or telling you how to run your business. I'm not trying to mother you into or shame in any way. This is more informative for those who may not be aware of these potential dangers. And I just want them to go into this with all of the information so that they're not blindsided by any repercussions that may come from this. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, what I'm actually speaking about today are copyrights. This is anything that is registered, trademarked, or copyrighted by other companies. A lot of makers out there, not just freshies, but handmade crafts in general, from tumblers to jewelry, t-shirts, anything that you can think of, there's always a potential for copyright infringement, which can be super dangerous. So some of the specific freshies that I'm speaking about are the designer label ones. So the Louis Vuitton, the Chanel, those types of things, anything Disney related, the Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse heads. I mean, right down to, you know, any of the Disney princesses, it could be sports teams, both college and professional. It could include lyrics or recording artists um, from their names to their images, pictures of them. TV shows like Yellowstone. I know that we all love these brands and these, these characters and shows and things, sports teams that we see, and obviously our customers do too, which make these items big sellers. There are a few others that uh, you may not even realize, like some of them are pretty obvious, you know, like, like I said, Disney and sports teams and brands, uh, Nike, things like that. Those are all very obvious to us that, you know, we are using somebody else's property when we use those designs. There are some other examples of copyright infringement that some may not even be aware that they're doing. And that's why I'm making this video because I would hate to see anybody make something not knowing the potential risk involved. So one of the kind of uh, more obscure examples would be the Christmas tree snack cakes by Little Debbie. The, the little white cakes with the red wavy lines and like the green sprinkles. Little Debbie actually owns that design for their snack cakes and it cannot be used for anything Say for instance, like freshies, that would be considered copyright infringement and you could get in a lot of trouble. Another one of the really common ones amongst freshies is the fragrance. So not even the design of the freshie, but if you have the freshie listed as black ice fragrance, black ice, the name of that fragrance is actually owned by little trees. And just labeling the fragrance of your freshie could put you at risk. Now, I know there's probably some confusion because we look at the mold makers and then um, where we buy our fragrance oils. And oftentimes they're offering designs that are within the copyright infringement or the fragrances listed on the website. You know, we think, well, that's what it was listed as the fragrance when I bought the fragrance. So I'm not really doing anything wrong if I'm using a Bath and Body Work fragrance and I bought it from a fragrance company and that's what it's called, then that's the fragrance that I'm going to call it. That's the name that I'm going to call it. But that still applies. And they could get into just as much trouble for those things. And once again, I'm not trying to tell anybody that they're right or wrong for doing these things or how they market or sell or any of the types of items that they sell. What I'm strictly trying to do is to make the people that are not aware of these laws uh, that they do exist and they could really get you into trouble. All right, so now what I want to get into with this is how risky is it? You think, well, I'm just a small business owner. I really don't sell that much. I'm flying under the radar. You know, I don't, I don't know how this company would ever figure out that I'm making these items. So I don't think that I'm at the potential risk for them to come after me. 
it's a lot easier than you think. And they don't care if you're selling millions or if you're selling hundreds. You know, that obviously, if you are selling millions of dollars worth of these products, you're going to be probably noticed a lot quicker. But they actually have specific people whose job is strictly to hunt down things on the internet, to see where people are using their images or using their property, their intellectual property in any way. And they will typically, in most cases, I say this, it's not always, but they will typically just send you an email or a message with like a cease and desist, you know, just stating that this is copyright infringement. And if you don't cut it out, then they will take further action. Sometimes they don't even do that. Sometimes they'll just slap you with a court order um, and you, you can go to court and they can sue you. And, and if you think, well, I don't post it on the internet, so I'll, you know, I only sell it like markets in person, that still puts you at risk. These people that are hired, or if you sell at a boutique or a market, you know, um, they have secret shoppers that will go into boutiques and look for items that uh, have their brand or whatever the case may be. And they will ask for the seller's information so that they can get in touch with you. Uh, markets, they have people walking around markets and, and checking vendors to see if they've got anything that could make a case. They're really, there are some companies that are more strict about this than others. There are some companies that are much more vigilant about uh, tracking down people that are using their brand. So for instance, Louis Vuitton is uh, well known for doing this. Um, let's see, Little Trees is very protective of their property. And, and even the shape of the tree for them is copyright. Like if you were to buy a cutter or a mold that's specifically that shape and you think it's just a tree, but there are certain properties about the shape of the tree that cannot be used for any other product by another company. Um, Disney is, is very hardcore about this. They have actually have read stories where they've gone into a, a handmade seller's house and like raided it and took all of the products that they had made, confiscated all of the products that showed or um, was any type of infringement on Disney at all or the brand. Um, I've heard stories about markets, uh, specifically like wholesale markets where people were trying to sell, you know, they sell like wholesale items for boutiques, like handbags and wallets and just clothing, all those types of things. And, and sometimes freshies are in there because a lot of boutiques do carry them now. And uh, Louis Vuitton had arrested lots of people, like a lot of people that day were arrested for using Louis Vuitton material without permission. And that's another thing. You can get permission to use these things. You have to contact the company and they have to approve your item. And it's typically going to cost you a pretty penny to do so and probably not worth it if you're just selling freshies. If you were selling handbags and you were using like scrap uh, Louis Vuitton bags as part of your new handbag, like re-sewing it, redesigning it, um, and you're selling those for $300 a piece, then it might be worth it to get that license or the permission to sell that. But for freshies, I think that it's probably um, because the profit margin is as high is not something that would make sense to seek out. So whether you're selling online, in person, like at a market or a fair, or wholesale to a boutique, if you're using anybody else's intellectual property that they legally own, you are putting yourself at risk. I'm not here to say you should or shouldn't do anything. I'm here just to give information so that anyone that is choosing to sell a product using a copyright or using any type of copyright material, I just want them to know what they're doing so that they're not blindsided when something potentially awful happens. Now, what are the complete consequences? That's gonna vary from company to company and probably the level that you're selling. Um, like I said, most of the time you'll get a warning with like a cease and desist. Uh, I've actually gotten one on Facebook where one of my photos was removed and uh, I was informed that 
that was copyright material and that I could not post that. And really what it was, it wasn't even the brand marker copied exactly. It was a cardstock freshie and the cardstock was similar to the white claw label, but it didn't even say white claw on it anywhere. It says a no laws when drinking claws, I think is what it said. Um, but it did have like the circle and the wave. So it was similar enough that even that was included. And they did take my photo down and they sent me a message saying what I did. And I, that was, you know, a little alarming. I didn't, I wasn't even aware that that met copyright requirements. So it was a little bit of a surprise, which just goes to show how careful you really need to be with this. If you continue to do it, or maybe some companies that don't give a warning, you could be taken to court, you could be sued. And the scarier part of that is that if you're not registered as an LLC, and you're just a sole proprietor business, then not only can they come after your entire business and everything that you, that you own business-wise, all of your business assets, they can come after your personal too. So your house and your car, your bank account, your personal bank accounts, like they can go after all of it, which is pretty frightening if you think about it. So you really have to ask yourself, is this worth it? Yes, I know that it's tempting and they sell their, these items, they sell quickly. You know, everybody loves Disney. Everybody loves designer brands. Everybody loves music artists. Um, but if it means getting in that much trouble, which could include jail time as well, I mean, is it worth it? Like I said, that's a decision that you guys get to make on your own. I just wanted to make sure that y'all were making an informed decision. Um, I, I know that there's a ton out there. There's a ton of, you know, what would be considered copyright designs and freshies out there. And it's hard to compete with that sometimes. But in the end, you know, you could either lose out on some sales or lose your entire business and potentially personal assets, um, you could really suffer financially. And then what was that extra, you know, however much really worth? So with that being said, that's really all I have for this video today. I just really wanted to get this out there. I thought it was something that needed to be talked about because I know there's a lot, there's been a big surge in, in freshies and making and selling them. And I just wasn't sure if these newbies coming in were looking at all the other freshies out there and thinking there's nothing wrong with making these freshies. I just want them to know that all of you guys to know there's a risk. There's a risk involved and it's up to you to understand these laws and choose your own path when it comes to these things. So I hope this wasn't too heavy and I'm hoping that it was helpful for some of y'all out there and maybe, you know, gives you the chance to make informed decisions for yourselves. So with that, guys, I just want to say thank you for watching and see you guys later.